So welcome to this week's Don't Eat It Out of a Box video. Um, you'll see that I am not in my kitchen. I am walking to the grocery store. Uh, I'm going to my favorite store, downtown Los Angeles, Urban Radish. And I'm doing that in honor of the end of Earth Week. So it was Earth Day this week, it's Earth Week, and it's our last day for me to sort of share with you just to remind you how you can incorporate your ideas about food, the way you consume it, uh, the way you source it, and in that way you can be a little bit of a part of helping our environment. I made it to Urban Radish and I am not surprised to see all of these beautiful uh, locally sourced organic vegetables that are in season and so I am going to be getting some beets I'm going to be getting some fennel, and I'm very excited about these snap peas. Um, I know the owner of the store, so she's not going to mind if I just steal one. Um, I'm also going to get some of these gorgeous tomatoes. Beautiful tomatoes in season. And I'm excited to see you in my kitchen. <laughs> One of the great things about walking around downtown Los Angeles to get my groceries is that I see all kinds of great positive graffiti. And it made me think of you cooking in your kitchen. You are not alone. You have me. And guess what else? <laughs> you got this. <laughs> so for me, it's about a two mile round trip walk to the grocery store and back. And I'm headed back with my fairly heavy bag of groceries, but that's okay. It's a beautiful day and uh, feeling a lot of gratitude and excited to cook an earth-friendly meal for you in my kitchen. See you soon. And we are back in my kitchen. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the grocery store with me. I'm excited to cook this earth-friendly meal. Um, one thing I don't know if you guys know about me is my love and passion for cookbooks. I probably have more than 200. Um, I collect them from yard sales, from bookstores, people give them to me. I have them from all different eras uh, and I just love them. I love the artwork, I love the recipes, I love the stories. Um, they're kind of one of my favorite things. Anyway, for today's Earth Friendly Meal, I found a recipe that I sort of wanted to play with uh, from a chef that I met uh, when I was in the Port Elliot Festival last year in England, and her name is Claire Thompson, and she wrote a cookbook called The Art of the Larder, which I really like because, well, first of all, if you're in America and you don't know what a larder is, it's a pantry. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't when I met her, I was like, what's a larder? Lard, that's fat. What is she talking about? Anyway, uh, a pantry and a larder, they're the same thing. and. I think she believes, like I believe, that you should keep a lot of healthy things like uh, some of these you know about me already, sardines, um, canned tunas and salmons and rice and barley and noodles, um, garbanzo beans, canned tomatoes, mustards, pickles, capers, and that way you can make a great meal pretty much at the moment's notice, um, augmenting it with fresh things. Uh, anyway, she has a recipe that I thought would be great um, for us to celebrate Earth Week, and it's called Helene, and we're going to do it without meat, and sometimes when I talk to meat eaters about trying to pull back on their meat eating because of what it's doing to the environment, you know, they get all, they want to fight back, so have a look at eatlessmeat.org if you're interested in looking at some facts about it. Um, I'm not gonna argue with you, I'm just gonna suggest that maybe you go with Meatless Mondays. Uh, that would help. Um, because it is true that raising animals for our consumption is putting a big effect into climate change in a not good way. Um, so, we have plenty of great nutrients in what we're gonna use and we don't need meat. As I said, the recipe is Helene, and here's what she says about it. Commonly served in India, Pakistan, Central Asia, and the Middle East. I feel like I'm reading in front of the class. Um, Helene, to use just one of its names, is a multi-pulse and grain doll, and there are many versions of it. My version, this is her talking, not me, uses lentils, barley, cracked wheat, and also meat, but I am excluding meat for now, for today. Um, she uses lamb when she does use it. 
she says, because I like it well enough without meat. It makes for a brilliantly, I should be doing this in a British accent, it makes for a brilliantly thrifty and flavor-packed midweek supper. <laughs> Uh, British accent. I can do better, I promise. Um, a tarka is a spiced oil preparation and can be added at the beginning and also at the end of this dish. So that's something interesting about cookbooks is that it gives you a little bit of history about what you're doing. Um, but basically, this is a lentil dish. Now she has us doing a lot of spices. She's got onion and carrot and tomatoes that she puts in it with frozen peas. Um, and instead of that, part of what I'm interested in with this Earth Week meal is reminding you to try to shop locally, uh, if you can, to source local food at your farmer's market or a grocery store that does that for you. Um, and because it takes energy to transport food it takes energy to store food if it's not in season and so if you're buying seasonal vegetables and you're buying them locally that's going to help the footprint of what that food has had to go through to get to your house so i've got these beautiful 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 from california of course where i am southern california beautiful heirloom tomatoes that we're going to put in there and then I'm also going to use snap peas, which I just love, and they're in season right now. I'm going to use those instead of frozen peas. And she had us using carrots, which I'm going to use, but I'm also going to use these greens because you can. They're wonderful, and uh, why waste food? And I'm going to add some fennel because I love that, and I'm also going to add some beets because they're in season. So I'm shifting her recipe just a little bit, but I like to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to soak the rice and the barley and the beans, they're not really beans, they're lentils, in cold water for an hour at least. So I recommend if you're thinking that you're gonna make this for dinner, maybe do this in the morning. Maybe throw this in a bowl, put some cold water on it, cover it with, uh, with, with a paper towel or, and stick it in the refrigerator until you get home from work. Um, now, because she's British, um, Claire, of course, does all of the measurements in grams, and I'm not sure how many of you cook that way. So she says 50 grams of uh, each of these things. For me, it's really measured out to be about a third of a cup. So we're doing a third of a cup of, I'm gonna use pearl barley here. I think she recommended um, cracked wheat, but I'm going with barley. And uh, then we're gonna do brown rice. All right, so we've got a third of a cup of brown rice. And then we have our dried split peas. I just used to love split pea soup so much when I was a kid. I still love it. Whenever I go to a deli, I always get split pea soup if they have it. Um, my mom and dad were not really much of cooks, but Sometimes, like special occasions, they would get a ham bone, and that ham bone would sort of be the base of the stock that ended up being the split pea soup, and that was really sort of a treat. Okay, so we've got a third of a cup of the split peas, and again, I'll switch back to the English. 50 grams, 50 grams of red lentils. I'm gonna get so many comments about my shitty British accent. <laughs> ah. All right, um, now we're gonna cover this in cold water and then we're gonna set it aside for an hour. So while our split pea mixture is soaking in water, we're gonna begin getting all of these things chopped. So, uh, the first thing I'm gonna chop is this onion, which you all have done with me before. And, um, I really like this version of doing it where you cut it in half. Got my little garbage tray here. Um, you cut it in half and then you slice it across. So I've gone across and then I'm going to go down 
And then when I go straight down, I end up with a pretty nice small dice and I don't have to do any more work than what I've just done. Now we're gonna do the other half. So in case you missed it the first time, you're gonna go across, 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 with your hand flat on top of the onion. Then you're gonna go down, you're slicing vertically now. And then you just come right across it and see how they end up in nice little diced shapes. And look, I'm not even crying. <laughs> okay, so we've got our onions done. These are gonna go in there, for safekeeping. The next thing we're gonna do is grate the carrot and the ginger. So I've got my grater here. <laughs> this is when I should have asked you guys. Oh, somebody actually on my channel wanted to know how I keep my pants from turning black. And my answer is, I don't. And if it makes you feel any better, when I was in cooking school um, at the Cordon Bleu, their pans were black also. So I, I have a feeling that it's the oil burning, uh, I don't know, into the metal or something. Actually, I don't know what causes that, but I know that my pans are really clean and no matter how much I scrub, um, I don't seem to be able to get that black off, but nobody else does either. Um, if you do happen to have a trick for getting the black off of your uh, sheet pans, um, I think somebody in my audience wants to know. Okay, so rather than grating my fingers off, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chop this last little bit. All right, so there's that, but no reason to waste it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the greens too um, because uh, they are just healthy, so why not? All right, I've got my onions diced and my carrots grated, and now I'm going to move on to my ginger. Now, um, Claire recommends in her recipe that we use a teaspoon of grated ginger. So I've got my fresh ginger here, and I am just um, cutting off the outsides of that bark, and then I'm gonna set to grating. Okay, so it looks like I've got a, at least a teaspoon there. It looks beautiful, smells good. I'm gonna set that off to the side. So Claire recommends that we use three uh, cloves of garlic and I don't know if you guys have seen this before. I'm just gonna press it down with my hand, with the knife in my hand and it makes the peel come off really easily, which I love. I hate when garlic gets like sticky and you can't get this peel off, but this is a good trick if you don't need the clove to be perfectly whole, to just put your knife flat and then press down on it and it just kind of breaks that peel right off. Um, and I'm just gonna chop that up a little bit. I love garlic. Really good for you. One of the things about these um, kind of vegetarian forward meals is that they do take a lot of work and a lot of prep time. The best thing to think about really, I guess, is that you know where your food is coming from and you know what you're putting into your body and you're capable of making something for yourself. And I think all of those things should feel really good. You should feel really good about them, that you are taking the time for yourself. and you know, the best thing to do is not let yourself get super, super hungry so that you just want to put some lousy food in your mouth because you just need to be satiated. Like, if you make sure that you give yourself the appropriate time, then you have time to do this and, you know, you can listen to a podcast or listen to your favorite music. I find myself listening to Fleetwood Mac a lot or Dolly Parton or Jack Johnson. Um, 
Tom Petty. And then Spotify has really learned how to make me my own playlist as a surprise, and so that's fun too. So I'm augmenting Claire's recipe with some fennel because fennel is in season right now, and uh, I'm excited about that. I love fennel. So I'm just gonna be um, chopping that up. I'm gonna try to chop this into smaller pieces. This is definitely um, a vegetable that you could use your mandolin with if you've gotten yourself a mandolin. Um, I'm just not doing it today, but that would be something I would completely do. Sometimes these um, fennel, I don't know what you call this. I don't know what that's called. If anybody knows, let me know. But using that as a garnish on, on top of it would be really pretty. So I'm also adding beets because they are in season and I thought they looked really lovely and they're very good for you. So I think they'd be good with this whole flavor profile. What I've done to the beets is I have boiled them in water and salt and a tablespoon of vinegar for about 20 minutes to just let them sort of soften up and the, um, the skin will then just sort of peel off. And what we're gonna do right now, since I've, I've kind of, I've boiled these in advance and got this, the skin off of them, um, I'm gonna chop these up and we're gonna saute them with the rest of our ingredients. Look how pretty that is. Oh, they're so pretty. So pretty, look at that. Oh my God, I wanna eat it right now, but then it won't be in the food, so. It won't be in the final dish, so I'm not going to do it. I was thinking about Earth Week and um, hoping that you did something to sort of honor Earth Day. Uh, I got a call from my daughter at college who said she was going meatless. She goes in and out of, of being meatless, but this time she said she's really for the environment, trying to get off, stay off of meat. And then she also said, which I didn't know, kind of made me feel like an idiot that I didn't know this, but that the clothing industry is, really has a giant impact on, um, on our environment. I guess all the, the water that the manufacturers use in making the clothes and the chemicals. Um, so her idea was to never buy new clothes ever again, said my 21 year old daughter. Hmm. I asked her if it was okay if I buy her new clothes. And she said, maybe. But I get what she's talking about. You know, there's all these really cool places now to buy gently used clothes. Um, there's The Real Real, there's Wasteland and Crossroads. Those are just a couple of the kind of chain vintage stores that, that we frequent. And, um, and then there's all the little vintage stores. And then there's people's yard sales. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that's a cool thing to start, to just stop buying new clothes. It would certainly um, add to your pocketbook, I would think. Pocketbook. Did I just say pocketbook? Does anyone say pocketbook? Oh my God. I'm not even old enough to say pocketbook. Honestly, I'm not. Like I'd have to be 80 and I'm not 80. I don't know why I just said pocketbook. I never say pocketbook. <laughs> the next thing I'm gonna do is rough chop these beautiful tomatoes. Now, Claire in her cookbook, The Art of the Larder, obviously recommends that you keep um, canned tomatoes in your larder. And I do too. But for purposes of Earth Week and trying to be um, seasonal and local and organic, uh, Urban Radish had beautiful um, heirloom tomatoes that are in season that were grown just probably 60 miles from here. And I felt like that would be a better, a better choice. So I'm just gonna rough chop these because they're gonna cook down um, with the rice. So they're just gonna kind of meld into the whole thing. I don't think you're really gonna get big um, chunks of tomato. I think she recommends about three large whole tomatoes. Um, I'm probably using five. <laughs> so we've got everything pretty much prepped here 
And the first thing I'm going to do is put a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in my searing hot pan here. It's about medium high heat. And then I'm getting to our spices. So the first spice we're going to use is a cinnamon stick. So I'm going to put in one cinnamon stick. And when you put your spices in the oil and it's heating, it just starts to release those flavors and those oils. I'm going to put two bay leaves and a teaspoon of cumin seeds. And those are going to get nice and toasty in just a minute. Oh, that's smelling really good. Okay, so we are going to now, we're going to dump in our onions and the fennel. And the carrots. And the garlic. I'm going to turn that down to about medium heat. Oh, and I forgot my beets. I'm going to add the beets too. That smells so good already. I'm going to let that all soften until the onions get sort of translucent. That's probably going to be about 10 minutes. Oh, just smells so good. I'm very excited about this. Okay, that still has a couple minutes to go, so I'm going to go ahead and measure out our other spices that are going to go in this. We have cumin, and we're going to do um, one teaspoon of cumin. This is all going to go in together. That's the next step. So one teaspoon of cumin, a pinch of red pepper, red pepper flakes, ground cumin, garam masala, and we're going to do actually um, two teaspoons of that. So these are my, this is my little half teaspoon measure, so that's why I did four. And a teaspoon of mustard seeds. All right, so oh, we also need a teaspoon of salt. And generous black pepper. I don't know what generous means. I mean, I do know what generous means. But I don't know what it means. Okay, um, I think our, our 10 minutes is almost up. And the onions are looking pretty translucent, so I say we're going to dump the rest of it in. So we're going to get all of our tomatoes in there. and our little carrot tops and the rest of our spices. I'm going to mix that around. Wow. I think the earth would be pretty happy about this meal. So we're going to let that go until the tomatoes soften up. I'm guessing that's going to be another 10 minutes, but I'll let you know. Okay, so I think I was right. Uh, the tomatoes, they look beautiful. I think they're soft. I think the 10 minutes was the right way to go. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to take those split peas and red lentils and your rice that was soaking in water for over an hour. I just love this little gadget. It's got, it's a, it's a strainer. I use it with my blueberries and you can fill it up with water and then you can just take the bottom part away and the water rushes through. Um, uh, so it's just fantastic, but anyways, I've drained my lentils here, and so now I'm going to put them in. There we go. And uh, I'm going to add a cup of water. And one of the things I forgot, I want to add um, some fresh grated turmeric. So I'm going to grate that in here. I've got about an inch of fresh turmeric that I'm going to get through. They say turmeric is really good for inflammation. Not for getting inflammation, but for getting rid of inflammation. 
So I've been trying to put turmeric into a lot of my dishes. I'm gonna give that a stir. And that was cold water that I put in, and I'm gonna wait for that to come up to a boil. And then when it does, I'm gonna cover it and simmer it for about 40 minutes. So it's been about 30 minutes and I am gonna check on our Haleem. We're probably gonna to wanna to let the rice go for another 10, so I think now is a good time to add our snack peas. Oh, that looks beautiful. I'm just gonna throw these in on top. I can't wait. <laughs> We've got a few more minutes before our dish is done and I just wanted to again like give a shout out to Claire Thompson and her book The Art of the Larder or Pantry. <laughs> I hope she's doing well there across the pond. <laughs> and since it's Earth Week I wanted to read to you a couple statistics. Um, this is from Sustain the Alliance for Better Food and Farming. And it's a short guide on how to eat well and save the planet. So the highlights are buy local and seasonal when available. And I already mentioned that to you and that's why we've created this dish. Um, buy food from farming systems that minimize harm to the environment. Reduce the amount of foods of animal origin. We talked about that. Maybe try meatless Mondays. Um, stop buying fish species identified as at risk, uh, choose fair trade certified products, avoid bottled water, and protect your and your family's health and well-being by making sure your meals are made up of a generous portion of vegetables, fruit, and starchy staples like whole grains. So those seem like simple things we can all try to do at least a little bit to help save our planet. I'll be back with you in a couple minutes and we're gonna try this delicious meal. Okay, well, I think if you make this the way I did, I think you're gonna be very happy with this. It looks just beautiful. <laughs> try to get you a better look. And here, I'm gonna taste it, look at that. I think that's just an amazing meal. A beautiful meal in honor of keeping our earth a beautiful place. Earth hot. <laughs> earth really hot. <laughs> you know how when something's hot, and you probably should just spit it out because it's so hot it's burning your mouth, but somehow you think if you just keep chewing it somehow the heat's gonna it's gonna stop burning but it just keeps burning that's what just happened to me actually it didn't burn that bad but it was hot but it's also delicious um this time i'm gonna wait for some of that steam to go off i will say i like this there's lots of really intense flavors the cumin the masala the cinnamon um the ginger the garlic so if you don't like spicy, I would leave that pinch of red pepper out. I happen to really like that. It's not too spicy, but if you don't like spicy, I would leave the red pepper out. Okay, now let's see if I can eat in a normal way without, um, you know, <laughs> burning myself. Oh yeah, that's really good. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Thanks Claire Thompson for that recipe and, um, I gotta say, I liked my little augmentations. Um, but either way, they're both good. Enjoy and uh, be good to the planet. 